Hello there, YouTube. I was curious about um, the way that I run my graphics card right now is I um, disable what uh, is called power play support, which is the power saving features that AMD has in their graphics cards. And uh, I was curious on if that was even worth doing. So I ran a couple Counter-Strike FPS benchmark map uh, on the workshop uh, tests. Uh, with it enabled, disabled, and then I went off on a, on a tangent. I was I was wondering about um, Mac Q mode, which in the video options menu is the uh, multi-core rendering mode, and zero is off, two is forced on, and uh, I had some interesting results uh, come up during my testing here. Um, as you can see, I got I made a little chart here. Uh, showing the results and when you're using power play and you have your flip queue which is another setting for AMD on NVIDIA it is maximum pre-rendered frames ahead uh, when it's on one it, it it's pretty much as instant as it could be to reduce input lag and um, I tested the extremes with with those settings so I have your power play enabled, flip Q1, and then I have flip Q5 and power play disabled. And then I did these other ones um, because a, a lot of pros, you know, they stream on Twitch, you ask them for their config or they show their video options and everyone wants to emulate the pros. So, you know, a lot of them put everything on the lowest setting for whatever reason. And, um, then I had my settings and mind you on this part over here, you know, flip Q1, everything lowest that's in uh, 1920 by 1080. My settings down here are in 1440 by 1080, four by three black bars, just to uh, separate that there. And um, so what I found out was when you have power play enabled flip Q1, which is what I recommend everyone do, you get, um, I mean, it, it, it's it's a decent average frame rate on this map. And I'm only using this map because it's repeatable over and over. And then when you put it on flip Q5, which makes the mouse feel really floaty, it goes up to 397. So you got 361, 397. But then with the same exact settings and power play disabled, so it's always on the highest clocks for the core and the memory, I got 373 average with my settings, which is, um, you know, I mean, I mean, you go 361, 373, that's an average. I didn't run these tests over and over, but that's significant. And uh, you always want more frames. So, But um, there's also the other thing where you have, um, I mean, you, you see here I got flip Q5, which is maximum of five pre-rendered frames for the game to process. And you see this humongous number, 427 frames per second average. And that might seem great, but if you put flip Q5 or maximum pre-rendered frames on NVIDIA on whatever the highest setting is, and yeah, you're gonna have a high frame rate, but your mouse is gonna feel disconnected from what your your crosshair is doing in game. And that's not good. You, you wanna put it on the lowest setting that, that, that you can. Um, so you could have the best latency, the best reaction time, because you already have your internet latency going against you. You have a whole lot of things going against you in the game, and you want to minimize all of the things going against you. So you could have that advantage on the enemy when you're peeking or they, they're peeking you. Um, and then, like I said, I, I also tested um, with MatQ0 and MatQ2, and I explain what that is, multi-core rendering. And um, as you can see here, power play disabled. So that's full clocks with a uh, flip Q1, which I recommend for input lag. I only got three, I mean, 272 average frame rate. But then when we go into enabling the power saving settings, which is on by default on every graphics card you go down to 243. And that's 
kind of unacceptable. I mean, look at the difference here. I mean, with the, you know, multi-core rendering off, I know I'm using this as the example here, 243, 272. And then you go 347, 36, uh, 361. Um, so I recommend everybody download MSI Afterburner and um, first of all, uh, you know, take note of what your default settings are. And um, the default settings on my graphics card um, for the core is uh, one, I think it's 1000. Yeah, I think it's 1000 and 1500. And I was able to overclock mine stable without it crashing or any artifacts going on to 1100, 1650. But to do that, I had to uh, define a different fan, fan profile here. And a lot of people download uh, MSI Afterburner, install it, and they put on the user-defined software automatic fan controls, and they leave the fan curve the way it is. They're thinking that, oh, it must know something about... No, it doesn't know anything. It's just an example. Change it. I mean, I'm really cautious. I mean, by default, like the way the fan works on mine is the fan won't even turn on. I mean, this is without my fan control here. It, the fan won't even turn on until the card hits 60 and it'll let it go like to 80, 85, 90. I mean, I mean, if it's crazy, but I know I, I, this is the range that I would like to run mine on for the most part for stability reasons here. You know, I don't want it to hit 70. During a game, it probably hits maybe 63, 65, but I mean, 60 is like, kind of like, I guess the average um, that, uh, that, that it gets to in a, in a really intense uh, game. So um, there you go, there, there's some quick little data. I'm not gonna edit this video. I'm just gonna cut it down a little bit. Do with it what you will. Run your own tests on your own system and ask me some questions in the comments because I would really love to get um, let my subscribers here and viewers uh, opinions on this. Thanks.